Hi there, this is just a bit of news for you. Yesterday, we completed the first female patient in the country to have an Inspire hypoglossal nerve implant inserted for obstructive sleep apnea. Just in case you don't know, this is a new technology for England or, or the UK. It's been done thousands of times in America, Germany, Australia, other places around the world. But for this country, it's the first few that have been done in this country. And it's the first operation of this kind we did at the Royal National ENT Hospital Sleep Department. Now, I'm pleased to say it went really well. Uh, it took us a long time, but we wanted to make sure it went very smoothly. There was no complications, no risks. We want to make sure we do everything absolutely right because, you know, this is... Uh, an expensive bit of kit. It's, uh, it's several thousand pounds worth of uh, equipment being implanted in people to help them solve or cure their obstructive sleep apnea. And we don't want to waste any of this, but also we want to make sure our patients get the absolute best care. So for the first, I don't know how many operations, we're going to get people from around the world just to make sure we're doing it as well as anyone else. So these are people with huge amounts of experience. And I'm really pleased to say that afterwards it went very well. We checked the implant, checked it was working. We checked that the palate was moving forward and the tongue was moving forward, opening up the airway. And although uh, we haven't turned it on yet, it, you have to wait a couple of months for everything to heal in that position and then turn on the implant so it starts working. So it helps this lady with her obstructive sleep apnea. We're quietly confident it's going to do really well. And the people there who'd seen you know, thousands of these operations before were very happy with the result as well. So this was a really important step for us. We, uh, we have the biggest um, sleep department in Europe, I believe. We, even in my small area, which is uh, uh, surgical sleep, we see about 100 patients a week with sleep and disordered breathing. And so, you know, this is uh, one of several operations that we do. I think uh, before this, I had about 42 different operations I do for obstructive sleep apnea. Um, but now this is one more. Uh, this is an implant that we're going to insert. Just in case you don't know about hypoglossal nerve implants, it's a, it's like a pacemaker type uh, device. It sits just about here underneath the skin with a little sensor that goes onto your chest wall. And the way it works is that sensor picks up when you're breathing because it sits in the muscles of breathing, what we would call the intercostal muscles. And these are the muscles in between your ribs. And that sensor works out when you are breathing. This device is turned on with like a magnet through the skin at night. And then when you are sleeping, it senses when you're breathing. Uh, and if there's a, you're blocking your breathing because you have obstructive sleep and you can't breathe, your oxygen levels start dropping. There's another wire that goes from this pacemaker that goes all the way up here to the nerve to your tongue. So it's called a hypoglossal nerve. Hypo means underneath, glossal means tongue in Latin. And so that wire goes all the way up here to this nerve and stimulates the tongue when you're stopping breathing. So instead of you, your tongue falling back and blocking your breathing, if you can't breathe because of sleep apnea, it pulls the tongue forward. So you can take a breath behind it. So it works very well in selected cases. And this lady was one of those selected cases. And I think she's going to do very well. So you can imagine this is an important and expensive bit of kit. We want to be absolutely certain uh, because we see so many patients, we can't give it to everyone. We need to give it to the right people. And there are a lot of people who get this implant, and this is from data from America and Germany, where it doesn't work very well for. So we want to make sure that we're not wasting any of these implants. These implants are given away for free uh, on the NHS. So we want to make sure we're not wasting any money. It's really important, therefore, that we check that we've done everything we can for these patients. Uh, they've had the, um, their breath through their nose corrected. We've removed big tonsils and things like that. So instead of people getting a lot better, but not cured as such, I mean, it's not really a cure because you have to turn it on. It's a treatment. But they get better to the point where they no longer have obstructive sleep apnea. And if there's anything else left to do, we do that first and then give them the implant. Because it may be that some of the easy operations, like taking out someone's tonsils, which takes about 10 minutes or so, if they've got big tonsils, you wouldn't put an implant in. You take out the tonsils, despite it being a horrible operation, there are less risks from doing that. Uh, and I can go on about that in another video, of course. Um, but it's really important that we make sure we implant the right people and so they get the best possible outcomes. And just to be safe, what we've decided to do at the Royal National ENT Hospital uh, on the NHS, 
we've decided to make an MDT uh, about these implants. We want to become uh, the, the biggest implant center in the country because we see most of the patients. Uh, and if we get all these patients coming through, we need to make sure we're not giving implants to everyone willy-nilly. We need to make sure that we're doing the right thing for these individual patients. So an MDT means multidisciplinary meeting where it's uh, myself, the other surgeons, and we get together with other people, a sleep doctor, a sleep technician, and we're going to invite the insomnia teams and, and sleep neurologists, whatever. And we're just going to say, look, we've got this patient who we believe would do very well with one of these implants. They meet all the eligibility criteria for an implant. We just want to make sure that you guys all agree. And some people may look at the sleep chart and go, actually, they've got this problem or they've got this problem. Maybe we should try that first. And we're like, great, let's do that first. Uh, and only when all these other things have been ruled out, only then do we go for an implant. So uh, what I'm trying to avoid is that we're not saying to people, um, I, I'm the gatekeeper for all of this. Uh, it has to be like a team decision. So we all agree. And so you get a, a meeting of minds and everyone decides collectively this is the right thing to do for this patient rather than pushing people through for an operation because of my ego or, or something else happens. Um, uh, you, you've got to worry about these things. There's a new bit of technology. Everyone gets very excited. So um, it's best to have people who aren't, biased by this sort of thing and I, I just it makes me feel like it's safe it's a bit of a it's a bit of a block on people getting excited and surgeons doing whatever they want to do it helps us uh, stay unbiased and safe and do the best thing for our patients but also uh, I'm thinking about documenting what we're learning uh, in our department so that other people around the country, because there are lots of sleep centers opening up around the country, they can learn, hopefully, from these videos uh, what we've learned. And I can spread that information and hopefully it will help people, say, in Manchester and other places where sleep departments are opening up. I hope you found that useful. I will make more videos about hypoglossal nerve implantation for obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Take care.